Okay, so you got two handouts today. You've got uh, exercise 221, which obviously we're going to work on, but you also got your assignment 204, which is your last assignment before the final. You're going to be creating two light fixtures and doing two renderings of each of them. So it's four total renderings that you have to turn in. I just, I, I've had too many people in the past not turn in the required number of renderings, and they've like, you know, gotten 25% on the assignment instead of, you know, a good grade. So I'm just trying to be overly clear <laughs> on this, okay? I know. So you should, uh, in, in, in my opinion, you should do one interior light fixture and one exterior light fixture, but that can be rather loose. But you also need a daytime rendering of each and a nighttime rendering of each. And there's a reason that I need both of them. I need to be able to see the geometry and the materials and the texture mapping of the light fixture itself. Therefore, I need the daytime rendering. But I also need to make sure that the light was installed correctly and shines correctly and casts shadows correctly, et cetera, which is the nighttime portion. And you're doing two different light fixtures, an interior and an exterior. The good news for you is that these two light fixtures will work really nicely in your final model. So if you design your light fixtures as final model light fixtures, you can then use them. So I'm not trying to make you just spin your wheels. It should help you in your final uh, project anyway. You can even do the renderings in your final project if you want when you give me the renderings. So um, you can do the renderings in that fake scene that I gave you last class if, if you don't if you're not at a point where you're doing night renderings on your final scene. Um, these two are due. Um, it's two separate posts, by the way. So you create two separate posts, one for each light fixture. They're due on the 9th of May, which is two weeks before the final. Uh, and then by that point, you're in pretty much production mode for the final anyway. Um, so that's coming. That's here. You guys have the handout. If you have questions, let me know. And I'm going to move on to exercise 221, which is what we're working on today. Um, this is your first interior daytime rendering. And that's what I'm going to walk through today. I'm going to talk about putting furniture in your building uh, and getting that interior ready. The good news for all of you, because you desperately need more time to work on your model, you'll have a lot of time to work on the interior of your model today. So the rendering, ideally, if your interior was done, you could be doing your final rendering for the semester of your interior today. I'm betting nobody is in that place right now. So instead of uh, overly worrying about that, use your time wisely today to try to model the interior details. Remember, you have to have an interior day and night rendering for your final project. Therefore, we have to start getting the interior ready. So I have my model. This is the master site. This is the, the model where the block has been inserted. And I also have open my block itself. So I have the base retreat. My, my little cabin in its own file. I have that open side by side with the site file because I'm going to be working in both. And this is the one place where it can start to get a little confusing because you have to pay attention to where certain things are being inserted and created. Um, so a couple things about creating this, this, uh, extra, this interior uh, daytime rendering. We did an interior daytime rendering before. Uh, I think it was exercise 119. Maybe you did the interior daytime rendering or the exterior daytime rendering. Uh, the idea, though, is the settings in the HDRI and everything that I've created thus far should be set right for, for the rendering. It should already be there because that's what we were working on last class. Before I start going in and messing with any settings, I'm going to go to my V-Ray options. And I'm going to assume for the moment that everything is loaded correctly. It looks like my maps and everything are loaded correctly. And I'm going to save. So in the V-Ray option editor, there's a save disk icon. I'm going to click on that, and I'm going to save in my folder with all of my uh, assignment 205 stuff. There it is. I'm going to make a folder for VizOps. And since I have that daytime set, I'm going to save myself a daytime VizOp. And this is great because you can go back and reload all your original settings. So it should work without a problem. You should be able to switch back and forth day and night uh, with just these files. So this is my uh, spring of 2018, not 2019, not 2017 either. 
uh, day environment. And I'll go ahead and save it. And that will allow me to come back and reload all of those settings that hopefully were perfect last time. So I have that saved first. Now, the other thing that I can do is I can also do a save as of this particular site file into a day version and a night version. The problem there is you have two different versions of the master site kind of going. I wouldn't do the save as yet. I'd go ahead and get the lights installed before you do the save as. At that point, you can do the save as. OK, so now it's a matter of figuring out what's our view going to be inside this particular building. And so this is a little bit more challenging to sort out. So first off, typically an exterior view we talked about last time, the lens length on the camera taking the exterior shot is probably about 28. That's a pretty happy spot. Maybe a 35 would work. It's not 50, which is what the default is. But when we flip into being inside, so if I rotate myself around and I zoom in here a little bit, the 28 is a pretty narrow field of view. I'd like to be a little bit wider. So with no object selected, I'm going to switch my lens length from 28 to 18. And I'll press tab to change that. And you see that suddenly I'm getting a lot more of my building. And this is something if you watch like the, um, you know, the, the home remodeling shows on TV, if you watch HDTV and stuff, you'll notice that whenever they're shooting inside a building, it's always really wide angle. So you can get more of a sense of what's happening inside a particular room. So I have this set up right now. Um, and I need to figure out where is the ideal view for my interior rendering. And so maybe it's this view. Maybe it's down below in here somewhere. Uh, looking up at my stairs. I don't know. I have to kind of play around now that I'm in 18 millimeter. Um, you know, what is that? What is that happy spot of, of where I want to do my rendering? You'll find that when you're working in 18 millimeter, sometimes things get a little clipped. You know, so something like that is, is not bad. I'd like to move myself over a little bit, maybe adjust my height a little bit, in which case showing the camera in another view can be useful. So right now, um, if I were to click on that little downward facing triangle and go to set camera and then show camera, we can see in the other views, and I know it's a little bit hard to see, right? There, for example, there's my camera. That's where I'm standing. And that's what I'm looking at. I'm going to switch one of these views into another perspective view to hopefully show it a little bit better. All right, let me zoom select it on my block here so I can orbit around. So here in this perspective view, we can see, OK, there's that camera right there. That's where I'm standing. If I wanted to move that over a bit, I can move it over. Oops, come on. Being very nice to me right now. Why is my seaplane, sorry, my seaplane is off. Let's try that one more time. There we go. So I can move that. And as I move that, maybe it's helpful to see it in both views here. As I go to move this, you can watch the view change in the, um, in the exterior one viewport up there. So it's not angled quite right. And sometimes it's easier to look at it this way and to make your adjustments inside this view. But once I have the view that I like, let's say it's this particular view, I'm going to go ahead and save this as my interior view. So I'll click on the little downward facing arrow. I'll go to Set View. I'll go to Named Views. And I'm going to save this not as exterior one, but I'll save it as interior one. And there's nothing wrong with in creating multiple views, because you might decide that, you know what, I'd really like this one at night. I like this one during the day, those kinds of things. So the next piece, though, is I need to start putting some lighting into my um, scene. And I also need to start putting some furniture into my scene, because I think it would be nice to have both. So I'm going to walk you through both of those today. And I'll show you how to put the art in the scene, too, um, because I have a few art uh, you know, pictures hanging on the wall. 
So let's start first with the lights. So when I bring in a can light, for example, and remember we created those lights last class, um, I'm not going to bring it into the master site file. I'm going to bring the geometry that holds the light into my base retreat. So I'll switch over. That's why I have them both open. And in this view, I'm going to look in here and I'm going to put my uh, light up on the ceiling in this view. Put it right up here. So I'll go to my blocks and I'll go to insert block instance. And I'm going to go find my can light. So I had on my, uh, on my OneDrive here in my resources folder under Rhino and Rhino Blocks, I have my lighting. And in here, I have a variety of different uh, light fixtures. I'm just going to do a 4-inch can light. I'll say OK. And I'll go ahead and say OK again. It's going to come in as a link and a reference. Say OK. And I will drop this. I'm going to snap right to that corner. So there's my little light fixture. But it's not in quite the right place. So let me move it. And maybe we'll go this direction by two feet. And maybe we'll go this direction by two feet as well. There it is. And so now I've installed that little light fixture. Now that that's up on the ceiling, it might be helpful to look at the top view. Here we are on the top view. There's my light fixture. Maybe I want to move it so that it's more centered on my uh, painting here. Let's go another foot. How about six inches instead? There we go. And let's create a few more of these. Let me mirror this. Another one. Let me take this and, oops, those two. Let me copy them. And we'll create a few more uh, lights in the room here, there, and there. Essentially, I'm just putting lights into the room. So you can see them in this view right now. There's all those lights. Let me switch into uh, ghosted mode so we can see it a little bit better. There we go. They're up on the ceiling in there. They've come in as blocks. I'll save my retreat base. I put the geometry in this file. Now I'm going to move to my master site, which is where the actual V-Ray lights are going to show up. First thing I have to do is update my block. So I'll go into Blocks, Block Manager, my retreat base, linked file is newer. Let's go ahead and update that. There we are. And I'll close. And lo and behold, the little light showed up. That's good. Now it's time to put the V-Ray light in. So I'll go up to my spotlight. And I'm going to snap to the center of that light, I hope, somewhere in that ballpark. There we go. And the first thing I need is my diameter. So uh, that would be one foot. And it's my height now needs to go straight up and down. So it's also going to be at one foot. But I want it pointing straight up. There it is. So there's my little light. And you see how I'm, I'm working with a lot of different views right now because it's complicated to figure out where uh, my particular light is falling. I need to move that light down so that it's below the light fixture itself. And I may also find, let me go into, oh, here it is in the top view. I need to adjust that placement just a little bit. So let's move it over. One more time so it's right where the light is. With that light selected, I'm going to go to the light properties. So with it selected, I'll come over here, click on the light. It is enabled. My color was 255, 214, and 170. I'll say OK. My intensity, I'm going to set it at 60, but it's going to be in radiant power or watts. My decay is going to be set for inverse square. And I'm going to take a quick glance down here and make sure these numbers aren't 0. If they're 0, you have a bad V-Ray light. 
you should create it again. It's a bad bulb. So all of those look okay. Because they all look okay, I'll go ahead in my top view and make a copy of these. So I'll copy over and get that one in the center of that light. Then I'll take these two and I'll copy them back to there. And one more set back here. There we go. So now I have those six lights in my room. And I could go into my V-Ray options. I could go into my output, make sure it's really small. And I could do a, a quick rendering to see if those lights are showing up correctly. Uh, before I do that, though, I'm going to go to File and then Save. And then I'll go ahead and render. And once again, it's small, which was the point because I'm just testing to make sure that those lights render in the first place. So we'll let that render in the background. Meanwhile, I want to go look for some furniture. And so you could, of course, use your table and chair that you created as assignment one. There's nothing wrong with that. That's your, your personal uh, project. But some people want to go find other, other blocks, other reference files, and that's OK, too. Uh, I'm not restricting that, the, the use of those kinds of files in this project. Um, so go ahead and do a Google search for Rhino blocks, or you can go to a website called Flying Architecture, which has a great collection of blocks that's available. Go ahead and make that big for a second. Under 3D models here, we can look at a variety of 3D models, um, and you can you can pick from that. I'll go in here to their furniture. Now, one of the things that that they've started doing, and you know, every website needs to make their money somehow. And um, so this website sells premium models. So if I were to pick this New York corner armchair, sofa, etc., cetera, uh, if I came down here, they're trying to sell it for 35 euros. That's how they're trying to make their money. It's a high quality model. It comes with all the materials that you'd need. But for the scope of this class, there's no reason to spend 35 euros on, on this uh, model. So if you keep looking, sometimes you have to scroll down a little bit further. There are, there are options like this one that are free. Just download. And so you can go ahead and download that. I'm going to keep looking here a little bit more. Yep, that one's expensive. Can't have that. <laughs> Let's try the wooden rocking chair. Yep, that one's free. So <laughs> anyway, I'm going to go ahead and click on the download link. And uh, oh, I, you know, I think I already have an account here. Sign in. Hold on a second. I've got to remember. Sorry, I should have. I should have signed in ahead of time. Give me a second. I have to look up my password because I don't remember what it is. Those of you that have listened to me in 135 know I do complicated passwords. So, so just bear with me for a second. There we go. See, I had to I had to just look it up. All right, so let's go back to that uh, 3D models. And where was my rocking chair? There it is. Okay, so I'll go ahead and download that. And so it's coming down as a zip file. I want to go ahead and show it in my folder. There it is. And I want to extract this. So I'll right click on it and say extract all, and I'm going to put it in my flash drive and 
to keep myself organized, I'm going to go into my resources folder. I'm going to go into Rhino. I'm going to go to Rhino Blocks. This is furniture, and I'll put it here. Um, let me go ahead and do a new folder for rocking chair because I'm not sure that it's going to go inside or it's going to create a folder. There we go, and I'll extract it. So there, it created a, uh, a set of files. There's a dark oak wood texture. There's a rocking chair, and there's a rocking chair object file. Hopefully, I can use the regular rocking chair, and hopefully, I can use the dark oak material. But before I, I, I insert it into my model, I want to go ahead and open it and see, because I don't know who made this file. I don't know how clean it is. I don't know how organized it is. And I want to make sure that it's good before I bring it in. So I'm going to go ahead and double click on that rocking chair file and open it up. And it may be opening behind my model here somewhere. Yep. All right, so there it is. Let me go to my layers here. And yep, they didn't do any layer, layer assignments. So uh, before I get too involved in this, let's go ahead and change this so that it's on a rocking chair layer. Uh, we can see right now it's already on the default layer, so let's just rename default to be rocking chair. And let's get rid of the rest of these layers. Yep, looks like there's a nested block on layer zero. So let me go into edit blocks, block manager. And let's get rid of that block. There we go. Let's close that and let's delete layer zero. Perfect. So I'll go ahead and save that. But I also want to make sure that the material is assigned correctly. So I'll go into my material. And there's a rocking chair material. But if I were to preview it, it's going to show up. Oh, it actually showed up OK. So it looks like it found the material OK. Therefore, if I were to do a rendering in the perspective view, even though the background is black, the wood texture would show up. That's a good sign. So now that I've confirmed that this chair looks and acts the way it should, I'll save it. And I'll go back to my retreat base file, so the one with just the geometry of the retreat in it. And in here, let me go ahead and switch to wireframe for a little bit. I'm going to drop it into this room. This was the room that I'm rendering, so I'll drop it in there. I'll go to Edit. Blocks, insert block instance, and I'll go find in my furniture, there's my rocking chair, and there it is. We'll go ahead and say open and OK. I want it as a link and a reference. I'll say OK, and I'll drop it in to my scene. Now, I probably need to move it around a little bit, so let's move it into the room. Oh, a little bit further into the room, like that. I have to make sure that it's actually at its correct height, which it's not. So let me move it vertically. And actually, I may need to snap to the, well, let me see it in elevation view. Sometimes it just takes multiple views. There we go. So here, I can move it so that it comes down. It just kisses the floor like that. So now I have my rocking chair inside the room. That's good. It already has its material assigned to it. That's good. I'll go ahead and save this. And I'll jump over into my master site. And I'll go to the Edit menu. I'll go to Blocks, Block Manager. And I will update the retreat base. There we go. And the rocking chair is showing up the way it should. So that's good. So I was able to put the furniture in. 
Let me go back to my uh, render frame here so that I can see. Come on, open up. So I can see that quick render of my view. So I know it's blurry, but it's giving me a sense of, of is it working? So I have my light. It's showing up there. My emissive material is working correctly. I also have my halo effect on the wall, which is good. I have my halo effect on this wall and on that wall. All of that's good. That's what I was after. Um, likewise, the sun is coming into my scene. I'm getting the sun on the floor here, so it's casting the, the shadows correctly. All of that's a good sign. When you're doing the daytime rendering, the lights are never as dramatic because you have a lot of ambient light. So just being able to see the little bit of halos, I'm happy. It's, it's turning out OK. I told you guys that I would show you how to do the artwork on the wall if you want to do that. One of the things that people love to do in their final project is they love to put one of their own drawings in. As, as artwork. It's, it's, it's kind of one of those things that you start to do in studio just for the fun of it. You always throw something like that in. Um, in when we were in school, this was back when you, uh, like, you were drawing more by hand and whatever, so it was a novelty to put cut out people in drawings. So you would do like a computer drawing and you'd put a cut out person in. When you did that, you would always take pictures of your friends and put your friends in your drawings and that kind of stuff. So it's just kind of one of those things that we do. Um, so anyway, how do you create these, these pieces of art on the wall in the first place? Well, first off, in our regular retreat file here, you have to create the canvas or the frame or whatever the object is that holds the, the art in the first place. So in this case, all I did was create a very simple rectangular box on the wall. So I could create, let me, let me delete this one and I'll create a new one on this wall, for example. So I went into the rectangular box, corner to corner, uh, and I snapped to some reference point. We'll say it's there. And I said at, uh, let's see, 2 inches for the thickness of it, uh, comma, 36 inches. And then, I don't know, maybe it's uh, 48 inches tall. So there's like a canvas, a piece of canvas. Now I need to move it up on the wall a little bit. So I'll go to move, V for vertical. And we'll put it up, I don't know, 36 inches. There it is. We need to move it over so that there's a little bit of space. Maybe I'll move it over like that. And suddenly I have that box to hold my, my piece of art. I'm doing it as a canvas. You don't have to do it as a canvas. You could do it with a frame around it. I just didn't want to build the frame. You could end up making this a block and then dropping it in that way. Uh, it's, it's up to you. So the next part of this, though, is that I need to have a material to apply to it. So I'm going to create a V-Ray material for that object. So I'll go into my materials, and I call these materials art. Uh, and there's a, there's a few examples, I think, are, that are included as part of your, uh, your materials package. And essentially, I'll go to Create Material Standard. And I'm going to call this one Art 7. Art 7. And then I usually add a little bit more of a description. I don't know yet what my art's going to be. So in order to figure that out, I'll go online. I'll do a Creative Commons image search. So images are uh, search.creativecommons.org. Um, and maybe we'll search for Flickr. And we'll search for, actually, let's do Google Images instead. Uh, let's search for. Um, Architectural sketch, why not? So let's say I like this drawing here. If I like that drawing, I'll download it. So let's see here. Let me visit the actual page. There it is. I'll right click on it. I'll say Save Image As. And I need this to go someplace. I'll put it on the desktop for right now. I'm going to end up packing the material as a way of collecting all the pieces. So now in my Art 7 material here, under my Diffuse Color, I'm going to click the little map icon. And this is, we did this a long time ago. And I'll choose a text bitmap. And I'm going to choose that file that I just downloaded. There it is. And I'll say Open. It'll show up here in my preview. I'll say OK. And now if I were to preview the material, it would show up there as the material. I'll take this and I'll apply this 
to my selection or to my layer. In this case, I'm going to apply it to my selection uh, because this object should be on a layer with all the rest of my art. If I were to switch right now into my rendered mode, we should see a preview of what that looks like on the wall. Remember, rendered mode is never perfect. I may need to do some texture mapping on this object, in which case I could go into my texture mapping. Uh, let's apply a box map to it. We'll do a bounding box, world, cap it yes, and now it's showing up correctly on the front. The sides are probably really squished, but I think for my rendering purposes, I'm not going to worry about them. I don't think they're going to show up in the final rendering. In some cases, you might have to adjust the sides. So that one's showing up nicely. I have my drawing on the wall. I'll now go to File, and then Save, and I'll move on. But before I do that, I want to go back to that material one more time, this Art 7. This is referencing, remember, I picked that file that was on the desktop. If my computer were to restart, or I were to move on and come back, and that file got deleted, I wouldn't have this material anymore. So to make sure that I have the correct material, I'm going to right click on Art 7 here, and I'm going to go to Pack Material. And then I'll go into my uh, OneDrive, I'll go into my Resources, I'll go into my V-Ray, I'll go into my V-Ray Materials. What? There it is. I don't know why it was picking. Oh, that was the zip file. Sorry. Uh, I have a folder called Art. Inside of Art are all of my Art files. Um, and so this is going to be Art 7. Oops. Art 7. There we go. And I'll click Save. That then writes the zip file that collects everything that I need. So now it's in my Materials folder. I'm going to go see that in my Materials folder. There it is. It's a zip file. I'm going to right click on it and say Extract All right in this folder. That's going to give me the Art 7. And it gives me the vismat and this, the, the image file, everything that I need to actually create the rendering. I'll come back here. I'll right click on Art 7. I'll say Import Material. And I'll bring in that material that I just saved on my flash drive to make sure that it's associated correctly uh, going forward. So if I lose the, the file on the desktop, it's no big deal. So go back into V-Ray Materials, Art, and then Art 7. There it is. Perfect. Now it's loaded up. Texture mapping's already set. Now I can go ahead and just save this file. And I'll jump back over into my master site file. I'll go to Edit, Blocks, Block Manager. Linked file is newer. We'll update that linked file. And now that's been saved. You can see that that updated. And so if I were to do the small rendering again, we can confirm that it all works. So my art's working. That new piece of art that I created is working. The rocking chair is working. It's in its correct view. Now it's time to up the, the quality and size of the rendering. Now it's possible that when you get this set up for your interior rendering, you may have to adjust the physical camera to make the shot a little bit brighter. Just like if you were photographing inside and you were trying to make the inside brighter, you could make that adjustment if you wanted to. That adjustment is available under the V-Ray options. And if I went to camera, I could then change the shutter speed down. If I lower this number, it'll get brighter. So I could change it to like 300, for example, if it felt a little bit, uh, a little bit bright. I don't think it was too far off, so I'll go to maybe 350. Now that all that's set, it's not a bad idea to do a couple other things. First off, under your VFB channels, like I said before, it's always a good idea to have these turned on 
and start to save them. The reason that I'm emphasizing this is if, for example, today, this became your final rendering, you might want these, uh, these other channels uh, to do a little bit of Photoshop work in, etc. I'm suggesting the RGB color, which is currently selected right there, the alpha, and as we come down here, I'm suggesting reflection, shadow, lighting, and again, all of these are, are listed here. Render ID and material ID, Z depth, and the last one is background. Remember, it doesn't take any extra uh, computing power on V-Ray's part to do this. They're just good reference files for later on. Once all of those are set correctly, I'll go back into my output settings and I'll change my viewport to be a lot larger. So maybe I do uh, a little bit bigger rendering here. It also wouldn't hurt for me to go into my system and to turn distributed rendering on. Remember that's that little uh, XML DR spawner that shows up that you shouldn't close. That lets us all share computing power here to, to speed up our renderings. I'll turn it on. I'll click on hosts. I'll click on find servers. See if there's any servers out there willing to help me. There we go, there's 22 of them. And I'll add them in groups of five. So there's five. I'll say okay. I'll go back and add the next five. I wish that you could add them all at once, but it seems to always crash V-Ray. All right, looks like I have them all. Uh, now that I have them all, I'll click on Resolve Servers, and I'll say OK. They're all loaded in and ready for me to do my render, and now I can initiate that, that full render. I'm not going to sit here and make you guys watch me <laughs> do the final render, but I will let it render out so you can see what the final resolution version looks like. So your goal today is to create an interior rendering of some sort of your drawing and post it. I'm not expecting it to be your final perfect quality high-end rendering but I do want you to get something from the interior of your building. A lot of you are, are at the stage where you're starting to put some interior stuff in. That's a good thing. We're, as we move forward, the further you are along, the better off you're going to be toward the final. So it's time to start wrapping that up, get that interior uh, done. Next class, we will continue working in the interior, but we're going to switch the settings over to do the interior night rendering. So I'll talk about some other types of lighting that you might want in the room, and we'll, we'll, we'll evolve it a little bit more. So if you can get your interiors done, you'll be ready to do that, that final rendering. And then next week, we'll come back and do the, um, the uh, exterior night rendering, which is that gold standard one that you want at the end. OK, I'll let you guys start working. You have lots of time to work today, so, so use it wisely.